Hello and uh, welcome to Politics Today. And in this programme today, we'll be discussing the importance of the National Day of Prayer that's coming up on Saturday, the 8th of September, and uh, why we all need to be praying for our nation at this critical time in this nation's history. So to join me uh, today, I'm joined by uh, David Hughes, Prayer for Parliament. Welcome back to Politics Today, David. And I'm also joined by uh, David Hathaway, from um, Eurovision. So David, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on uh, on politics today and thank you for all the incredible work that you've done and the ministry that you do and uh, you know you're an inspiration to us all so thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, first of all I'll, I'll start off with uh, with you uh, David Hathaway because we've got two David so um, <laughs> it could get confusing in this program. Um, to start off with um, why is it that you've called for, for another National Day of Prayer and um, are you building on the foundations of, of last year's? Well uh, the, the reason for calling it is because of the desperate need for prayer Absolutely. that with the chaos going on uh, both in the government and, and quite honestly in the whole nation over this that uh, we need to consolidate through prayer we believe as christians we believe in the power of prayer and working with david hughes who is praying so much uh, for parliament and has done for so many years we realize and david is sharing uh, and will in the program how effective that prayer has been over the period but what i'm seeing is this i know prayer has gone on for a long time and there are many many groups praying but one thing i concentrate on is the need for unity standing together because that's how you defeat the enemy and i could do a whole program on this in fact uh, i i will talk about it but also uh, it's the the fact that it has a bigger impact on the rest of the nation you see what i've seen is what we did in ukraine i, I think you all know that because of the crisis with russia um we called uh, the first national day of prayer but we saw that as all the denominations and all the leaders came together, it became so strong that the president, Parshenko, joined us and the prime minister so that it's had an impact on the whole nation. And while individual prayer is so essential, and I'm a great believer in individual prayer, but at the same time, when you are united in prayer, it's even more powerful. So that's why, that's one reason for calling the day of prayer. And the other is because of the critical time. And interestingly, uh, a year ago when I called the first one on the 8th of September, it was only after we got the Emanuel Center book that we realized the 8th of September was the 77th anniversary of King George VI calling the Day of Prayer. This now, it's on a Saturday, it's the 78th anniversary of King George calling the Day of Prayer. So it's very significant. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and, and David, I mean, we've done so many programmes together talking about the need for Christians to up their prayer life, to pray and to seed for Parliament and for our government, um, particularly as we're in this kind of crucial time in terms of the Brexit negotiations. Um, how important is it that, that um, people like uh, David Hathaway and also um, uh, Brenda Taylor are also leading this charge to mobilise Christians uh, around this country to pray for our government and to pray for our nation at this time? It's extremely important and the National Days of Prayer I believe had fundamental uh, change, caused fundamental changes in Britain and the more we have the better. Um, the tragedy is that neither the Queen nor the government at the moment are calling for these but uh, the fact that we've got them and uh, they're bringing a lot of Christians together, particularly the intercessors, um, because the intercession that's needed now and going up till March and beyond, obviously, uh, is so important. I mean, we've seen, we've been in Parliament and even the Tuesday before last, we, we were actually in the gallery praying through when the um, vote was going through on the customs union. And that was a critical vote. Um, and I'm convinced that if we, because we were there praying and interceding uh, during the debate, during the voting, uh, when they're actually physically, the MPs are going down the corridors and going into the yes and no lobby, um, 
we've God's managed to activate the angels and activate the results that we've seen. The press themselves, I thought a lot of people are wondering why it is that Theresa May is getting through all these things. Well, it's prayer. It really is. It's prayer. We've had um, up to 11 people in, in, you know, a whole row in the in the public gallery there at the time, and we're going to up it in September when the Brexit uh, things go on between for, uh, between the um, recession, at, sorry, the recess and the uh, time of the conferences. They're doing two weeks of uh, on Brexit in the um, Commons. So we'll be in there, and then after they come back after the in October after the conferences, again we'll be really upping the prayer cover. Absolutely. And um, David, uh, can you tell us what some of the issues are that uh, you'll be praying through on uh, Saturday, the eighth of September, on this e National Day of Prayer? E yes, because what I'm saying is that. I, I, I had in my spirit, uh, even without the Brexit question, to call the nation to prayer because there, there's so many problems in the nation. The nation is turning away from God and we're being controlled by a small, very small minority. And I challenged Run MP on this in a, in a meeting. And I said, you're a Christian. Do you stand up for Christian values? Now. He's a Christian in Parliament. I won't mention his name. And he said, no, I don't support Christian values in Parliament because I have to respect the majority of my constituency. And therefore, in Parliament, I don't, rep uh, don't represent the minority. What a terrible statement for a Christian. But this is why it's so important to really pull people together in prayer. I mean, I personally, I, I have to spend an enormous amount of time in prayer, personally, but it needs more than that because it's unity in prayer. Now, what are we praying about? Well, we're praying over Brexit. And I, I, I think that just as the reason I was able to call the whole nation in Ukraine, and I mean, to say that the president supports it, the prime minister supports it, and as a result of our days of prayer, the president declared this year, the Ukraine, the year of the Bible. Wow. Now, that only comes because we have the head of every single denomination and we get 10,000 people praying. And what I'm seeing is, well, as we build, I don't think we should end with this. I think we've got to build up because what I believe we have to do is, through prayer, change the nation Absolutely. and bring the nation back to God. And uh, the reason I could do it in the Ukraine was because of the war with Russia. Mm. Here, suddenly I saw, because of the controversy over Brexit, the need to pray over Brexit, this is a beginning. And I believe that out of our praying here, we're going to achieve far more in the longer term. In, I, I mean, look at, the, at, at look, look at the position of the churches who don't accept the authority of the Word of God. When I call the leaders in Kiev to pray, I, I can have the Orthodox, the Catholics, the Pentecostals, the Baptists, a lot of them. On this ground, I say there's only two things we've got to stand in unity on. One is in the church, the total, final authority of the Word of God. They accept that. And the other is salvation only in the name of Jesus. But you see, we need some leadership in this nation, spiritually. and. Um, this is why I'm so thankful, David, that you're working with me and in Parliament and so on, because it's as we stand together in unity, I look back, my roots go back to the Welsh Revival. My father was converted in the Welsh Revival, and I know how prayer changed the nation. And not only Britain, you'd be surprised how far, I mean, even in Korea, it changed Korea and Singapore and all sorts of things. So. I can see the effectiveness of prayer spiritually to begin a tidal wave which will bring the nation back to God. Amen. Yes. Well, it's uh, inspirational. So I love your passion, David, and um, this is what this nation needs at this time. So let's have a look now at the advert for the National Day of Prayer um, that's taking place on Saturday, the 8th of September.
and that's a day not to be missed. Uh, David, the other Dave, David Hughes. Um, I have to ask you, how can our viewers get involved in this National Day of Prayer? Because after seeing this programme, I'm sure many of our viewers would have heard of this and would actually want to attend this very special day that's occurring in um, Westminster Central Hall on Saturday the 8th of September. I, I, I did my tickets online. I just went straight online. Um, National Day of Prayer, 8th September, and I've taken up two tickets for me and my wife. And it's as simple as that. Um, there's a small charge because obviously it's in the Westminster Central Hall. But uh, don't miss it because this is the nation that people are going to be literally praying for. Um, if you love your nation, which I do, and I'm sure everybody else does, uh, just be there. Try and make certain you can change your agendas and everything and get to it because the nation needs to be changed. I've always said this is a Christian nation. A lot of people don't think it is a Christian nation anymore. Well, it is. It's, in the, in, it's ingrained in the roots and heritage of this nation, and it's never going to change, irrespective of what the minority say. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, David, for those of us, uh, um, and particularly uh, that can't actually make the uh, National Day of Prayer um, in Westminster Central Hall, what do you advise they can do? Well, I, I just suggest you join us in prayer wherever you are, Absolutely. because yes, you can. And I do know that in all the days of prayer we've had so far, there have been groups in meeting different places. Some would meet in a church or a chapel, some would meet in a home and join us in prayer. And if you register with us, we will send you a full list of all the major issues that we're praying over, because we do have to pray over corruption in the nation. Yep. It's critical. We have to call the nation back to God. Absolutely. We have to pray that God will raise up spiritual leaders in the nation. We need them. We need leadership to lead us out. And also, we've got to pray that the churches will recognize that we've got to come back to what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. There are too many leaders in the church who are saying that the Bible has to accommodate circumstances, civilization, and you've got to change it. You can't change the word of God. And actually, the Bible says in Revelation, if anybody takes any word out of this book, their name will be taken out of the book of life. If they add anything into it, to them will be added all the plagues in the book. So you can't change it. And you know, one thing about Israel, we've been talking about Israel before, one thing about Israel is when they copy the scriptures, it is so meticulous that if the um, person, the scribe, makes the slightest mistake, it's scrapped. It's got to be perfect. The trouble has been down through the generations, too many changes in the origin of the scripture. And it was only when somebody a couple of hundred years ago actually went back to the Greek and translated, not from the Roman, but from the Greek and saw what the scripture said. When he read it, he said, either this book is wrong or the church is wrong. And I believe we've got to really come back and I'm going to be calling for a spiritual reformation in the church. So there's an enormous amount to pray for in addition to praying for Brexit. But Brexit, as David, as you've said, September is critical, uh, both with Theresa May and the negotiation she's having, and they're leading on for that September and October. The EU is tentatively supposed to make the decision of our whole future. And my argument is this, who's going to decide the future of Britain, the European Union or God? And I don't think it's just the politicians here. I think God must be in control. And only when we really come together strongly did... Oh boy, oh boy, I've had so many battles, I could tell you spiritually. It's a fight. It isn't just a matter of saying, oh, God will take care. No, the Word of God tells us to fight for these things. And they don't call me David for nothing. And they don't call you David for nothing. <laughs> David had to fight for Israel. Absolutely. And I believe the call is the church has to wake up and fight. If I have a moment, let me just tell you, I was at an international conference earlier this year in Munich. And one of the speakers, and he really touched me. He was a converted witch. And he was from Africa. 
uh, from uh, Uganda, I think it was. And he said at the age of three, he began the practices. By the age of nine, he was head witch for the whole of Uganda. And by the time he was 12, he was training the witches. And he said that his only opposition to bringing demonic control over Uganda was praying Christians. And he, they spent 500 million pounds in studying how to break Christians. And in the end, they found out the only way to break praying Christians was to bring disunity. And when they brought disunity, the Christians lost their power. But when they were united together, nothing. And at one stage, he had to advise all his witches to flee from Uganda Amazing. because of the power. Now, if you understand, there is demonic power in this nation. We're all aware of that. And in actual fact, it's not a political party. It's not one particular group. It is demonic power trying to control this nation and get it away from Christians. And unless we fight, we'll lose the battle. And there is a danger. Don't take it for granted. And we need to call on God to deliver this nation. And one of the things we're going to be praying for is there are many controversies, but what we must pray for is that the will of God will be done in yeah. this nation. Absolutely. That's what I was actually going to say. <clears throat> One of the prayers that we're praying a lot now when we're in Parliament is to say, Lord, let your will be done in this chamber. Let your will be done in the Commons. Let your will be done in Parliament. It's a simple, for those of you who intercede, it's so simple. You don't have to have be long-winded prayers. Let your will, O oh Lord, be uh, here as it is in heaven. Mm. And that's, that's, that's how simple it is. Yes. And I think a lot of people tr think it's so difficult and it isn't difficult, it's, it's very easy. The more simple, the better the results. Well, uh, you're absolutely right, David, because I've seen some phenomenal miracles. Um, in, in fact, one book which I'd recommend you get is Why Siberia, which is a story of only three months in Siberia. You can get it through our website. And there were so many miracles, not just of healings, but of provision with money, with aeroplanes and with visas and so on. It's a phenomenal story. But every time when I went to prayer, there was no long-winded prayers. If you know me, I'm not a, a great one for long-winded prayers because I believe in getting down to business with God. I believe in talking to God man to man. <laughs> You know, I've got a different concept of prayer. I believe in a conversation. But when you're really wanting something, like I'm wanting now, it's a matter of, Lord, we need your help. And every time I prayed within, in Siberia, within five minutes, God, through the Holy Spirit, would put in my mind exactly what to do. If I did exactly what he said, the miracle happened. And so I, uh, there's an awful lot we've got to learn in prayer. And I want to bring a different dimension into prayer. Mm -hmm. And yes, all right, you can meet in your individual groups. I, 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 we need to come together and learn and share together. And Corporate prayer, yeah. if I can tell you one more thing. Of course, well, I'm not going to stop. Well, it. it's very serious <laughs> because um, in actual fact, my life changed six years ago. I'm 86. It changed. That's another story. It changed when one man who is a key intercessor met me and knew that God had called him to pray for me. And through the intercession of that one man, the whole of my life has changed. Now, I want you to understand, that's me changing. And I want you to understand, that man, he'll be with us on the 8th of September, don't worry, I wouldn't run the 8th of September without him. <laughs> he will be there. But he will not be showing himself publicly. He doesn't want to speak. But he will be there because he is supporting and backing me up all the time. He's praying now, he knows I'm on air now, he's praying now. And the change that's come about since that intercessor, you've got to look at the story of D.L. Moody. It's an identical story. When 
uh, when the intercessor joined Moody, the whole of his life changed, his whole ministry changed. And D.L. Moody's ministry finished when the intercessor died. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Well, That's it's amazing. these, this is why I'm calling you. Yeah. And this is why I'm, get buses. Come on, I, I heard from somebody yesterday, I was doing a radio interview, they said, oh yeah, we're organizing buses. Organize your buses. You know, how do we bring unconverted Jews into the meetings in Israel? We charter the buses and the people register to the buses and we know the name and the address of everybody who's there for the follow-up whatever they do in the meeting. And you know, what I'm saying is this, bring the people in, because I believe what we're doing in the Westminster Central Hall is only part of an ongoing move. Mm. And I'm calling the nation back to prayer. Amen. One issue I want to touch on, and I think this is very important, and uh, David Hathaway touched upon it earlier, is um, leadership for the next generation. Um, my generation and, and younger need to, to really take the mantle of prayer to pray for our nation. Um, how do we encourage um, younger Christians, particularly the millennial generation, to uh, seize this moment and to be part of history making for our nation, to turn this nation back to God? You're talking about Christian young... Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, um, you've just got to uh, encourage them, um, hopefully take them to a live church, and let them make up friends with their colleagues and you know children's church and youth church um, and you know not ram the bible down their throat and be just let them make their own friends but the biggest thing i'm we, i find is uh, with my wife is praying over our children praying over our grandchildren just interceding for them at all times um, you know, there are, some children have gone off and done, done their own thing because they've gone to university or they've gone into medical school or whatever, but you still just keep the cover going and, and I believe the Lord will honour it and then bring them back, the prodigals will come back at the right time. I mean, that's the main thing. And I think the other thing, when we're talking about prayer for Parliament and, and with yourself, David, and this programme, there's nothing political about any of this. It's totally godly and, you know, Politics doesn't really come into it, but the number of people who I uh, just wanted to, because this changed the subject a bit, but I just wanted to say a lot of people don't believe that you're non-political. Yeah, uh, and, and David, sadly, we've got uh, five minutes uh, left of the program. Um, I have to really ask you is that there is something very special about your generation, that World War II generation, and um, my fear for my generation and younger is that when leaders like yourself are, are with the Lord in heaven, who's going to take up that mantle, and how can you prepare the next generation to confront the challenges that this nation and the world faces in the next decade to come? Well, uh, I, I recognize and, and I do believe there is something from my generation. Um, this, this is recognized, particularly because I'm 86 years old and I'm still active. <laughs> I pastored when I was 18. But I believe you're absolutely right. I am concerned about the next generation. And I mean, I've got in my own family, I mean, I've got three daughters, I've got five grandchildren, I've got four great grandchildren. <laughs> so I'm obviously concerned. But you know, we need to pray, and I think one of the big issues in the day of prayer is praying for the next generation. But I'm also convinced we do it by example. Absolutely. Because young people need a role model. Yes. And if we can, as an older generation, set the example, then they will follow it. And I'm seeing it with my own kids. They, they, they respect leadership, they respect something, and they want what you've got. And, you know, this is how I preach the gospel. I don't preach uh, as many people do. I try and show who God is, the reality. Look, a God of miracles and a God of power. Do you want to know my God, my Jesus? And this is how we're going to influence the next generation. And out of our praying will come the leaders, because if you look at me, what created me? I am the result of my father's prayers. 
I, uh, my, my bedroom was over the kitchen and I woke every morning to hear my father praying out loud downstairs underneath me. I knew he was praying for me. And I want to say, we as a praying generation through our praying will change the next generation. Incredible. We're down to the last two and a half minutes of the programme, David. So do you have a message to our viewers why it's important they attend this National Day of Prayer on Thursday, the 8th of September? And if they can't... Saturday. How, sorry, sorry, Saturday. And if they can't, how can they pray? Well, I'm very determined to get as many people as possible there because it's when we are together in unity. And uh, that's what the scripture says. When we dwell together in unity, there God commands the blessing yeah, right. and it's a show of unity but if you can't then stand in unity with us communicate with us link into the prayer and we will support you where you are but come on get those buses fill them up and make a decision come down it's a Saturday make it the best Saturday of your life it's going to be that for me I enjoy it Fantastic. And how can our viewers uh, get in touch with uh, uh, know more information? Um, get on the website www.eurovision.org.uk uh, or email us. But just get on that website and you get the detail. But let me tell you, it's in the Westminster Central Hall, 10 o'clock till 6 o'clock on Saturday the 8th. And Technically, you need a ticket, but I'm going to say this. If you haven't managed to get a ticket, turn up. You can get it at the door. Excellent, excellent. So um, within 30 seconds, how important is this uh, National Day of Prayer? How, how can you really sum up how vital this is for the nation at this critical uh, junction in our nation's history? For God's will to be done, we have to be having groups like this and National Days of Prayer, and we're going to see what happened like in the wartime when the enemy was kicked out because the enemy is still there it's spiritual uh david and david thank you so much for being my my guests on uh, politics today thank and, you and i just want to thank you all for watching uh this program it uh, it might be august but that doesn't stop us praying and uh, we should prepare our hearts really for this national day of prayer that's coming up on saturday the 8th of september so thank you for watching politics today